We are now officially live for a, another iteration of the stove beeping because the timer is done. Um, and I feel like I can hear my beep. the timer. I hope you guys are excited. It's going to be a really, really, really fantastic day with a really, really, really lovely, lovely human. There we are. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are Good. you? You? I'm doing so well. Look at your skin. It's like glowing. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yours too. Uh, I'm sitting in front of a window. That's why. It's just like it's making everything disappear. Um, where in the world are you right now? Uh, LA. Oh, nice. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, now we can hang out and be like in-person friends after after all this time and after all these years, who knew that it was gonna be over an Instagram Live that we were gonna reconnect. Um, but uh, let's let's start off today by doing a quick thank you to Kino for hosting this event. Kino, for those of you who don't know, is a new film company that democratizes film, ensuring that the people actually involved in the magic of movie making are being compensated properly for their work, while elevating the fan experience and championing underrepresented and diverse stories all of which is a beautiful focus on community and no one would be anywhere without it. We'd also like to give a huge shout out to Nier for championing this industry conversation as we are here today to learn about and to learn from and to celebrate the artist and incredible human that is Dalila. And thank you so much for having me. Oh, we're so happy that you're here. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna do a quick bio and you can fill in all the blanks for, for the things that I've missed. You were born in Montreal, mm -hmm. began your career acting at the age of five. Yes. When yeah. you first appeared in a national commercial, which was, what was that? Uh, gardens. It was for a, a, a frozen vegetables commercial with a lion. Sexy. We love, we love vegetables. We love lions. <laughs> um, we didn't know that they went hand in hand, but they apparently, for you, they do. Um, after that, you moved to Vancouver, where mm -hmm. you won the Young Artist Award for Best Performance in the movie, The Stranger. <laughs> and then in both 2011 and 2012, you were awarded the Young Artist Award again for your work in Joanna Makes a Friend. Yeah. So you're just a critically acclaimed, <laughs> like you're, you're so accomplished for, for where you're at in life. It's amazing. <laughs> and then after that, you went on to star on Odd Squad mm -hmm. and Dead Hearts, and then landed the role of the infamous Diana Barry in Netflix's Anne with an E based off of the book Anne of Green Gables, which is where we met. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything? Anything else you want to add? Uh, I filmed uh, a, uh, a movie in uh, Regina uh, Saskatchewan. Yeah, Regina mm -hmm. Saskatchewan uh, called The Adventure Club. Uh, mm. uh, when I was 14, if I'm not mistaken, um, I had a lot of fun on that on that shoot as well. It was like about these uh, three kind of adventuring kids uh, that find something called a wish box uh, that it grants three wishes uh, to whoever touches it. Um, and the three kids touch it and then are able to, you know, like make wishes and stuff, which is pretty cool. What was your wish? What was your character's wish? Oh, I forget. It's been a long time. Um, I think she makes like some kind of wish to to help her friends because to as a as a joke and slash experiment, one of the characters uh, wishes for like unlimited supply of like the Pez candies, uh, <laughs> and then he gets it, and then we're like, whoa, wait, this actually works. So I can't remember what hers was, um, but yeah, it was something something along those lines. But if you could have that now, what would be your wish? Oh. Oh, I should have known. That's a tough question. <laughs> hmm. One wish or three wishes? Say one, because your character got one. Mm -hmm. <sighs> hmm. I guess I'd wish that. Hmm. I'd wish for my loved ones to be happy. I... Oh. Because that's always been a very important thing for me is that. Um, I can strive for my own happiness, but I, I, I really want the people that I care about to be happy themselves. So if yeah. I make a wish 
that would in a way guarantee that. Yeah. Uh, I'd make me very happy. I mean, so. What a beautiful human and soul you are. I think that's, I mean, I'm sure you are part of you as a human being is already doing that for them, making them happy. Um, <laughs> what a great way to start off. Um, just reminding everybody like how great you are on camera and off camera um, as a human being. Why don't we start off with where all of this began? Obviously it was very early in your life, but what do you remember being the first moment when you were able to recognize that you were an artist? Hmm. Hmm. I think it was, I was maybe like six or seven and I was still sort of like back in Montreal. It was very, very early on in my career and I was attending this like acting school, which I cannot really remember the name of at the moment, but we were doing like, you know, acting exercises mm -hmm. and, and uh, it was like one of two kids that was in this acting school. <laughs> the rest of them were like uh, either teenagers or adults or whatnot. Um, but I, I can remember just being in this environment with a bunch of other people who were committed to creating uh, the characters and telling these stories and just like very young being like, yeah, like I, I want to do this. I want to basically like play pretend um, for the rest of my life. Mm. Tell really cool stories and see really cool like perspectives and stuff. <sighs> yeah, I think that's when I, around the time where I started realizing that like, this, this is what I want to be. I want to be an artist. I want to be an actress. Mm. Well, then how did the first commercial audition come about given how young you were? And that moment must have happened before then for you to be able to like have the the, the courage and the wherewithal to um, commit to such a crazy endeavor. <laughs> like how did <laughs> you get into that? Like, I mean, I can't even remember. I, I feel like I had a hard time speaking to people when I was like just learning to speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. I actually don't remember this, but my parents told me uh, the story of like how I got into acting, um, which was I was around four years old. So it was before I my career like officially began. And I used to always go to them uh, and like point to the TV and be like, I want to do what the people on TV do. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and one day my aunt, uh, she mm -hmm. found this like acting competition uh, in in the newspaper that it's went from Friday until Sunday um, and all ages were welcome to apply and it would just be basically by process of elimination mm -hmm. um, and then on Sunday the winner would be announced uh, and my parents asked me if I wanted to do it because you know I expressed the oh, I want to do what people do on TV um, uh, I said yeah I went into the competition and I ended up winning it. Um, and then after that, my parents asked me, like, do you want to keep doing this? And I said, yes. Um, mm. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing shortly after that, I, I got the audition. I have very vivid memories of being on set, filming the, the commercial, especially when uh, they brought the lion in. Um, oh, obviously, they... A real lion. Yeah, there was a actual line <laughs> I wasn't the way that they shot it is like now with like my experience and my knowledge and stuff I know I'm like oh yeah that's how you do it mm -hmm. where they shot me first saying my lines and basically looking at a tennis ball and pretending like that was the line and then they took me out put the lion in and then just shot the scene but I remember being in the room and just seeing this lion walk by like really close and I was like whoa well, so that was, yeah, I feel like it's all downhill from there. To be like your first job is with a lion, and then afterwards, like, what, does it does it get better than that? Has it gotten better than that for you? I got to ride a horse on Anne, so that was pretty fun. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but I mean, what a what a what a way to knock it out of the gate! Like that's a that's a big swing. That's a big swing for your first job. <laughs> Um, and like, how did it feel for you being at that age and being on 
set and like where were you at in, if you can remember like internally because it it takes a lot of confidence to do this as an adult but to do that at that age as well like where mm -hmm. do you, where, where did that courage come from mm -hmm. i've always liked telling stories uh and i have you know two younger brothers uh bruce solomon and rafael alejandro and we used to play a lot of like pretend when we were kids mm. uh, and so i guess i guess that's just how i saw it at that age i didn't see it as like oh there are a bunch of people and there's a camera and i need to be on my mark and i need to do this and it was more just like i am playing pretend mm -hmm. and that, <laughs> like now i have a slightly different approach to it right like now i see it more as like my career, my profession, um, my passion in that sense. But as a kid, it was more like, this is so cool. This is so fun. I, I love being able to be here with these other people who are also helping me to get the the best performance possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because like, at, when you're, when you're like, five, six years old, you don't, I, I feel like you don't really have much of a concept of like, this is a job, you're more like, oh, I'm being given this really cool opportunity to to use my imagination and um, and just kind of go wild with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where my my courage sort of stemmed from. And then I that sort of experience taught me that I really love to being able to be in that environment specifically. Uh, and, and also to be able to have my work um, shown, you know, to have other people also see it um, and be able to, to perform not only for myself, but also for the audience. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you worked so consistently afterwards, like throughout the majority of your, of your childhood, essentially growing up on camera going to that kind of Hermione Granger character on Odd Squad and um, yeah. how did you balance real life and work life at such formative formative years? Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for my family, uh, mm. for my, my brothers. They were, my parents have always been in, incredibly supportive of my brothers and I and in our passions and our the different uh, paths in life that we want to want to walk um, and yeah we've always been a very close-knit family and they are legitimately my rocks because um, mm. yeah I, I, I grew up in the industry my yeah. basically my whole life has been the film yes. yeah <laughs> which can it's had it's had its ups and downs you know it definitely is different um but i'm i'm very grateful to to my family for for supporting me and for grounding me and for being there for me on days where it, it's just like you know i'm i'm 12 i'm in toronto i was living in vancouver i'm now filming in toronto with like my dad's there the rest of my family is back in vancouver and it's i'm working because i'm like one of the main characters i'm like working pretty much every single day a bunch of lines uh of we worked for 15 months in, in, in Toronto. Mm -hmm. That was the first time that in my career, it had taken me so far away from the majority of my family for such a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And initially it was difficult because it, you're not used to that. You know? No. And not only that, but you also have a job. You need to perform. You need to show up on set ready to work and ready to, to, uh, explore and collaborate with the rest of the people there. Um, so yeah, it was it was a lot of uh, you know being honest and communicating with with my parents uh, and my brothers regarding like how I was feeling, even if it was just like oh you know I have a lot of schoolwork to get done, and I don't know when I'm going to have time to do it because I need to learn lines. I need to yeah. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get through this, this, this work. Um, and it was like, uh, my mom who she, she, uh, was a teacher, uh, and, and my dad, you know, just like sitting down with me and going and being like, okay, 
I know it looks like a lot, but we're going to take it one step at a time. Okay. We're going to help you figure out what to schedule and what not. And just those little things that end up becoming big things, for yeah. me, um, I guess helped not only then, but also to help shape like who I am as a person now. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very grateful to my family for having, for always having that back. But, I mean, I'm so happy for you that you have such a wonderful support system. And what a great opportunity for you to develop the skills of being able to advocate for your needs. That's something that people in their like 50s have a hard time doing. Like, I feel like that's the problem in most marriages, not even just <laughs> being able to communicate where, where you're at and what you're feeling. But yeah. like juggling all of that, being 12 years old, being away from home, and having the ability to just share is so profound and I feel like that's only gonna benefit you in the in the in the long run because like in a way mm -hmm. you you're kind of forced to grow up faster than a lot of kids because you are doing more than a full-time job and then also full-time school too like it's 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 pretty nuts the um the the amount of responsibility that was thrown on to all of you at that time but in a beautiful way because it's created such an amazing mm -hmm an amazing story. So why don't you tell me before we get into like the depths of it, um, what your first experience of Anne and Green Gables was? Had you heard of the show, uh, the, the, the book prior? Had you read it? What would like, where, where did this journey begin for you? Okay. Uh, when I got, when I first got the audition for Anne, I actually, I actually auditioned for Anne initially. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> I did like, three. I did three auditions for Anne, one for Josie Pye, and then one for Diana before it, I went into the chemistry test. Um, and no when, way. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty wild. It was really cool, though. And I and I, I appreciated it because it gave me like a very great understanding of what they were looking mm. for in terms of the types of performance and the types of stories they were they were looking to tell. Um, uh, but yeah, like when I first got the audition, I was like, oh, I recognize uh, Anne of Green Gables. I hadn't read it as a mm. kid, um, but growing up, you know, in, 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 in Canada until I, I moved to, to the U.S., I knew of Anne of Green Gables and that it was like uh, a story, <laughs> you know? uh, but I hadn't really taken the time to, to read it. I did when I got hired. Um, I read the, I read the first book and I, I get why it's a, it's a, it's a classic. It is very, very thoughtful, um, and explores a lot of things such as like feeling alienated, mm -hmm. um, and feeling different and how you reconcile that difference with not changing who you are, but also understanding that the fact that you're different is going to make it harder for you to fit in, but that doesn't necessarily mm -hmm bad thing and you will find the people that are meant for you and that are going to be by your side but um yeah so uh i got the audition did some research on yes. it <laughs> uh did some research on it to get like the the general idea of like what Anne of green gables is about who Anne is as a character took the mm -hmm. character description read the sides and whatnot um and when i got the audition for diana uh I thought it was really cool. I really liked the fact, um, I also really liked the way I've been able to develop her over the course of like the three seasons that, that we had, um, because she started off as very much the, the epitome of a good rich girl in the 1800s. <laughs> you know, she, she doesn't speak out of turn. She, you know, it's, it's the whole thing of like seen, but not heard. Uh, she's very polite. Mm. Um, she's very kind and, and would not. Um, and then who she ends up, like at the end of season three, she's in a way the same person, but also drastically different. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a way that I've always loved to think about Anne and Diana's sort of uh, friendship relationship is that um, Diana keeps Anne grounded uh, and Anne reminds Diana to look up. Mm. The, like, because without Anne, Diana would have just stayed on the path that her parents had set for her. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if she would have even considered something else. Not saying mm -hmm. that the path that her parents had set for her is wrong, 
but it might not have been what she wanted. But if Anne hadn't come into her life, she might not even she might not have even considered another path. Yeah, but it, would, it wouldn't have been a possibility. Yeah, but because Anne came into her life and and from like the yeah, because the first scene where they interact is like they meet, and then you have the scene where they're in the woods, and Anne is like, "Oh, I can tell you stories about this," mm -hmm. and Diana is just her eyes are just opened. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like, wow, there is, I can do this yeah. as well. I don't have to just do this. I don't have to just do needlework if I don't like it. Yeah. Use my- That the, the possibility of a choice yeah. exists. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and on, on Anne's side, Diana is the one who goes and is like, uh, like when Anne speaks out about what happened to Josie Pye in season three, mm -hmm. newspaper, Diana, the one who calls her out on it and is like i get it but that's not the way you go about that like right. you, you publicly mm -hmm. humiliated her i get you were trying to do the right thing but the way you went it about it mm -hmm. hurting more than helping mm -hmm. um, mm. keeps and grounded so i i really liked uh that and when uh i was able to explore diana's character in in the audition in the initial audition uh, I was great. And then when I was called in to do the chemistry test with Amy Beth in Toronto, um, it was so much fun. Uh, <laughs> I went in, I went into the room and there was like, there was Moira, Miranda, um, and oh, I forget, but like the, the acting coach that was uh, there um, and Amy Beth. And it was, we did some exercises where uh, we were like sitting on the ground with like our backs to each other um and we would just like tell stories uh we were like asked questions such as like oh what is what is your greatest fear as like your kid and then you had to just uh. yeah that was a pretty interesting one um and then it was like we were supposed to do the scene and we had full range of the room no mm -hmm. don't worry about don't worry about being seen just run around there were chairs and they were whatever and so i just remember like amy beth like jumping up on a chair and then she got down and then we hold we held each other's hands and we just started like spinning around and going crazy and it was it was a lot of fun um and i remember going out of that that chemistry test being like oh, you know like i really want to work on this project um and then i got hired for it and it was great it was it, and once i got hired i read the books uh and I spoke a lot with like Moira about like the, the sort of uh, types of themes that she wanted to discuss with uh, Anne with me and also with my own portrayal of, of Diana, you know, of, uh, I didn't, at the end of, of season three, she doesn't stop being a good rich girl. <laughs> like that, that's always going to- That doesn't go away. Yeah. <laughs> It goes away. She becomes, <laughs> becomes bad. No. Um, yeah, yeah. No. That that trait of hers, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. But she changes in ways such as, like, whereas before she would have been afraid to go take the Queen's Academy entrance exam because her parents told her not to. Mm -hmm. now, she, now she goes and takes it. And she would have been afraid to even talk back to them regarding what she wanted. But when they express their, her parents express like, no, you are a woman. You're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. You're just supposed to be a daughter who just listens. And she tells them like, does what I want not matter? Which mm -hmm. done in season one, she would have just taken it quietly and been upset, but not said anything. Swallowed just, it. Yeah. So, so I, I loved being able to go into this, this show with, uh, one perspective, one vision, and being able to just flesh her out uh, to be Diana that we ended up with in season three, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun to do. I mean, such a beautiful arc. Circling back, do you remember what you said Diana's greatest fear was in, in the audition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I started talking about how I was afraid that uh, that Diana was afraid that um, she was surrounded by people who would never actually care about her. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, I started crying while, while talking about this, where, where that um, 
that she had friends who weren't really her friends who where she had parents who just wanted her to be a good daughter who didn't actually care about what she wanted mm -hmm. and and that, that she was so afraid that she would be stuck there forever that was yeah. what i what i said her greatest fear was i mean and would you agree with that being carried to the end of the i think so uh, there were a lot of moments where um you see the fact that she um specifically there's there's moments in season two like where when she goes to aunt josephine's party mm -hmm. uh, and meets uh, uh like aunt josephine introduces her to the 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 pianist mm -hmm. um oh you play piano oh you love playing piano you could do this and diana goes and is like oh well if it's agreeable to my husband mm -hmm. that entire episode is basically about just her being confronted with the fact of like your perspective isn't the only one that exists yes uh, like how she thought nothing of the fact that her aunt um and uh the woman that she was living with were actually in love that they were loving she was just like yeah it's good friends yeah um, roommates <laughs> but no i've had a couple of roommates <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah in that episode she she becomes confronted with the reality that like no they were in love they romantically in love mm -hmm. um up until that point she didn't even know it was a possibility which is why she reacts um so like discombobulated yeah. <laughs> um because it, her entire world view was shaken that day the yeah. whole realization of like you don't have to do what your parents tell you you can choose your own path regardless of whether or not it's the one your parents chose for you and mm. you can love whoever you want to love it doesn't have to be what society deems appropriate because that was that's what that entire night was about mm. it was like a bunch mm. of people who are society's outcasts coming together mm -hmm. finding a mm. other um so that was a moment where like her fear um was like battling with that of what was known to her and this unknown that she also found appealing mm -hmm. but i didn't know whether she should i i found that really fun to explore uh oh, i thought of another moment but i forgot it and i mean you had so many great moments on on that show and like that episode in particular i mean really obviously spoke to me and i like to go back to what you're saying at the beginning of the conversation about being like an outsider i think the the most important thing that there is places for you to belong and sometimes you just have to go find them um because when you do find them they're so much more beautiful yeah. and you can find spaces where you're accepted you can grow you can and you can flourish and just i think a lot of young people um grow up thinking like diana that there's only one way in life mm -hmm. and it's a f fabulous piece and lesson that you, you got to be a part of to tell people that like you said there are more than one ways of living there are more than one like you, people live differently than you all the time it's what makes this world a a really beautiful place um what would you say thinking about all these incredible topics that you ch that the, that the show um, tackled was your greatest challenge as an actress hmm. in the show mm -hmm. like was there a particular scene or a particular moment an mm -hmm. episode where you were like okay this is pushing me hmm. Hmm. i guess the uh one of the episodes was uh the episode where diana the the party mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> was like, like her whole thing of like no, it's unnatural, you know, two women mm -hmm. cannot file, therefore it's wrong. Um, like that whole thing, when I read the episode, I was like, oh no. <laughs> come on, Diana, come on. <laughs> uh, but this is the thing that makes her eventual, um, in, in episode 10, uh, season two, episode 10, where she goes and apologizes to Aunt Josephine and is like, I'm sorry for the way that I acted, you know, yeah. I didn't know. And I I know so much more now than I did then. Um, it makes it all the more, more impactful because she has this very shocked and, and absolutely um, shaken reaction to it. Mm -hmm. But 
yeah, reading reading that episode, I was like, oh, no, like it, it's mainly um, we as actors are taught like don't judge your characters, right? Because yeah. when you're they're not if a character is a bully, they don't see themselves as a bully. Absolutely. They see themselves as honest or as just you know helping people out. And that's what um, Mr. Phillips <laughs> is doing. He's helping everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping everyone learn. Um, so from Diana's perspective, she wasn't like being wrong. No. She, her entire world was turned upside down. And this yeah. is the at the time. Um, but yeah, reading it, I, I did have this feeling of like, no kid, like, no, like I wanted to, I wanted to hug her and I wanted to hold her and be like, it's okay. It's not mm. bad, all right? Um, which is what Anne and Cole were trying to do in that scene for her. But in that moment, it was such a, like a world shattering thing that she wasn't able to see past that at right. the time. Right. Uh, then we was able to grow, but she needed that moment. Um, so I guess, yeah, that was a thing that, it wasn't necessarily difficult in terms of acting, but in terms of like who I am as Delila, being able to, Put that aside and go, okay, from action mm -hmm. until cut, I'm not Delila, I am Diana. Mm -hmm. so this is her perspective. This is how she feels now. And I need to do that justice. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that was difficult. This was difficult um, in season three uh, episode, I think it was seven, six or seven, when uh, Diana and Jerry's like relationship starts declining. Yes. Uh, it was so so hard to do it's a scene where we're in the woods and we're walking and we're talking about Frankenstein yeah. uh, it hurts so much because um Diana was trying to have you know what she perceived as like an intellectual conversation and he was like the sledding is so cool I love how the yeah. monsters are so cool and her reaction to it made me so sad because I'm like art is subjective art is meant to be appreciated however you appreciate it there's no mm. right to appreciate it so Mm -hmm. if Jerry's takeaway from Frankenstein was like I loved how cool the monster was <laughs> and Diana's takeaway was like oh I love how the weather changed to reflect the moods of the characters yeah. both those perspectives are okay and cool and good yeah Diana's reaction was like oh you're not on my level right which frustrated me as Delilah <laughs> so much <laughs> <laughs> because I was like but he's so sweet and he's so kind and like he literally does not have the access to the education that you were able to yeah. have due to the privilege of being rich. Right. And this is this is when you're like the rich the rich girl good manners is coming out again. Yeah. 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 I was like I was like no because it it hurts so badly that by the end of that scene, like I wa I watched the scene after and AJ, it was so hard to be because I had to basically like I had to use him right. Yeah. Diane using Jerry. By the end of it, she was like, okay, you're not good for conversation. You're just good for kissing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was her conclusion by the end of it. And it was difficult as Dalila to play that because mm -hmm. I was having a hard time separating myself from Diana's perspective at the time. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't want to hurt AJ. I, he's like a, he's like a friend. He's, he's a cool guy. I don't want to hurt him. He looks so sad. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He looked so sad and it broke my heart. But in order to do her arc justice, because she does in the next episode, she realizes that like this whole thing is not who she wants to be as a person. Mm -hmm. And she ends up growing and changing from that. But in order for that to happen, you have to have the moment where she is just basically being terrible. She's being, <laughs> where she's being her mother. <laughs> Yeah. Like she's like waking up being like, ah, you have to be this way. And then you're like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's the thing we're all escaping is avoiding the, you know, <laughs> repeating those things. Yeah. Repeating, essentially becoming your own worst enemy. Yeah. You don't yeah. want that. And like, there's the saying of like, oh, either you die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Mm -hmm. uh, where like Diana had this moment, it was like with, with her sister, Minnie Mae, if I'm not mistaken, where, um, Minnie Mae is crying because their mom is trying to like make her, like teach her, right? Mm -hmm. And told her, Minnie Mae says the line of like, oh, uh, 
something along the lines of like, oh, I don't like you and not even you like you, something to, to that effect. Oof. And that is like a big turning point for Diana where she's like, yeah, no, not even, I don't even like who I've become. Um, yeah. But yeah, episode seven, that one scene specifically was, was tough for me to do because I, I don't like being, uh, I have a hard time playing like bullies. Yeah. Um, mean characters because it uh you know I I had personal experiences with with bullying and people being being mean to me and mm. I have <laughs> I I've strived to I don't want to make other people feel that way yeah. uh, so even if a character is doing that and even if I know like oh it's not me it's the character it's still that initial separation is still difficult mm. um mm. but yeah, when uh, with the help of the the director of that episode, Paul uh, Paul Fox, if I'm not mistaken, um, he helped get me to the point where I was like, okay, this is Diana, and this is important for her as as a as uh, as a character to th this is her perspective right now, mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not I as a person, I as Delila, agree with it or like it. This is her perspective right now, and in order to do her arc justice, her character justice. Um, the audience is going to have to hate her now yeah. because she is being terrible. And, and I cannot hide that fact just because I, as a person, don't like it. Mm -hmm. But it also makes her more well-rounded and more human because yes. everybody has flaws and everybody makes mistakes. And especially when we live in a culture where we're constantly pointing the finger, being yeah. like, you need to do better. And then somebody tries to do better. And most of the time people are like, but you still did this. What was so beautiful about getting to do Diana in those moments is you do get to redeem yourself and you do get the opportunity to change and you do show people that you can open your heart to be like, well, I don't think there's anything more vulnerable than going up to somebody and saying, I was wrong. Like, thank yeah. you. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for, for teaching me because especially when we're talking about the queer storyline how many people have an adverse opinion towards towards that identity and have changed since being like oh it's not scary it's not so bad um it can be really beautiful but also owning the fact that like i may have made you feel unsafe for a moment or unwelcomed and i need to acknowledge it so that we can heal together because that combined vulnerability just makes the world a better place and you get to do that by being the person who actually gets to be the most vulnerable, which is ends up being a, a beautiful learning lesson and a great gift, especially for the audience. I mean, it's why everybody's here today. It's why Miranda's there. She just waved. <laughs> uh, what time is it? You're in Europe. <laughs> um, Hi. You're enjoying it. Happy belated birthday. Um, the, uh, <laughs> so w what, um, like taking, all of that and like what would you say has been your greatest takeaway from your experience on Anne as an actor and as a human maybe they're the same answer hmm. Hi, Miranda. Hi, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. as an actress i guess that was a very big thing where like the roles that I had played before were roles where, like, uh, I agreed with their actions, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, as a person, was like, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 this is, like, or the majority of the time I would be like, yeah, no, this is, this is a cool character. I'm playing a cool, uh, likable character, um, and the audience is going to be, like, on my side and whatnot. Um, and then when I, when I started playing Diana, there were some episodes, uh, some scenes where, like I, like I was just talking about, where I did not like where, where she was at mm -hmm. in that moment. Mm -hmm. I, as a person, was, was frustrated with her or was, um, uh, and, and as, as an actor, it is very important to be able to uh, acknowledge when this is your character and this is me. Yeah. And, and, and that was a very big, cause the, the audience did, you know, the audience reacted, 
um, with with disdain when they saw, you know, the way that Diana was treating Jerry and with nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you know, she's being so mean. Mm -hmm. Not stopping mean to Jerry. And like, I agree. Yeah, I, as a person, you were there. You were the audience. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you guys on this. I do agree that she's not being the best person right now. Um, but that sometimes I feel is difficult as as uh, as an actor to to separate yourself like that because we're asked to play uh, someone that at times is just completely opposite to who we are as as people mm -hmm. who who represent or who believe completely different views. Um, and in order to be able to do like the overall message or the overall theme of the project justice, you need to play these characters as as real yeah. not as you judging them the entire time because you don't agree with their actions it's like yes in the interviews later on you can totally say oh yeah no my character sucks <laughs> but <laughs> but when you're playing the character you need to give yourself over to them like that and i think that was um something that uh playing diana um because when I when we finished Anne, I was like 17, 18, and I started when I was 15. So pretty much my teenage years were spent growing with Diana. It's pretty um, impressive. Yeah, yeah. I was very, um, I was very like grateful to have been able to spend my my teenage years not only working but also working on developing uh, Diana Barry, whom I I hold very dear to my heart. Um, uh, and yeah, I guess. I guess also deciding um, very early on in in her character creation, who did I want her to be, mm -hmm. um, and what, what kind of journey that I want to take her on. What impact does Anne's arrival have on her specifically? How does she grow and change from uh, being Anne's best friend and from uh, going on the wild adventures that Anne goes on? You know, um, and how does Diana? evolve as as an individual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that as an actress was very very uh important for me that i that i took away from from that experience and as a person hmm, hmm. well as a person for one i was very excited when i when i learned that we were doing an 1800s type thing i was super excited to work <laughs> uh i was hyped i loved uh all of that costumes are awesome um, Shout out to costumes. Yes, fantastic. Um, but <laughs> um, I guess just being able to be, being able to tell these stories that, um, like about, about uh, feeling like an outsider, about what to do about that, about finding, trying to find your place within the world, um, about how sometimes life isn't fair and it sucks when it is and it sucks when you, in this point in time, are powerless to do anything about it except just be upset mm -hmm. about it and want something to change but not knowing what to do, um, about striving to to like the person you see when you look in the mirror, mm -hmm. um, to find your people and be okay if some people just don't like you because mm -hmm. you're not responsible for the version of you that is in other people's heads. The only person you're responsible of is yourself. And uh, I, as a person, was re really happy to be able to, to tell stories like that um, and I guess that was one of my biggest takeaways of, of working on Anne is just being able to feel comfortable in the fact that sometimes you're going to be an outsider mm -hmm. and sometimes it's going to suck, mm -hmm. right? That you want to be part of a group or you want to be accepted or, or you want to be seen and sometimes people just are not going to but that that doesn't reflect upon your worth as a person. Mm. It's mm. how they perceive you and you cannot do anything about that except just going, okay, all right. Do I like who I see in the mirror? Yeah. Do I like the person that I'm growing into? Do I like the work that I'm putting in into becoming who I want to be? If the answer is yes, then that person's perception of me, you know, it's their perception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> well, there's so much heart in the way that you portrayed Diana too, because Diana, in a sense, becomes an outsider when she becomes friends with Anne. Yeah. It's like, I don't understand your brain. I don't understand like all of these things that are coming up and you, you, you become an outsider, but like you recognize each other as both being different. And, and that is like the core in, I think happiness and in finding like any type of friendship or relationship is what makes you, you and being able to appreciate it because it is not me. And if you were me, nothing interesting would ever happen because um, we would just be doing the same things. And so you, you brought so much heart to that character by just like by allowing her to be an outsider, by bringing in your own uh, beautiful experience. And like, my God, you're eloquent. You're such a profound talker. Like thinking about all these sound bites, I'm like, you'd be a professional speaker. Like, and using that, do you have any advice for, what would be your big, biggest piece of advice for people who feel like an outsider? Hmm. Hmm. I guess that basically it it doesn't get easier to to go into a space hoping for for acceptance acceptance and being met with either disdain or or just they just straight up don't care um that it, it's still difficult but the fact that we have outsiders plural means that you're not alone mm -hmm. and that even if you feel like that right now and even if it it sucks right now you're not mm -hmm. and and it's hard sometimes to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It really is, but I guess just a thing that sort of helped me was finding the little things in life that, that I appreciated and that I, I strived to experience and also becoming happier with, this sounds cliche, but just like <laughs> happy being alone. Mm -hmm. um, happy just being, being yourself and knowing that just because you are walking alone does not mean that you are wrong or that there's something wrong with you or that you're broken somehow. It just means that right now there isn't really anything, anything there, but that doesn't mean that you aren't. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess just, try and find little things every day that make you appreciate the fact that you're experiencing them. Like, uh, oh, I get to listen to my favorite songs or, oh, my favorite artist is coming out with new work. Um, or, uh, oh, I'm gonna be able to go to this place or learn about this thing. Or even like, oh, I love sunrises. Sunrises are beautiful. Um, or the sound of birds or wind or, I think that, those things help make you feel a little less alone because there's so much world out there that even if like only 1% of people like you, that's still a lot of people. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it sounds like very little, but 1% of like 8 billion, mm -hmm. 7, 8 billion is a lot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, that's my, that's my advice for, for, uh, anyone who's feeling like an outsider is that uh, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. Like it right now, you are not. not. <sighs> and yeah, one day, and and hopefully it'll it'll be soon. Uh, you will look around you and realize that you found your people. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, gorgeous answer, beautiful. There's also like the 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 shitty person in me is immediately thinking of rupaul going like if you can't love yourself how the hell are you gonna love somebody else uh but within it like talking about all those things is finding like what you love about yourself i love that you love sunrises and sunsets 
I love that you look forward to like outings and learning in, in museums. And there are so many people who do as well. I do as well. Like, and being able to share that with people is the greatest gift because it reminds you that you are not alone. That's the gift of stories too. Sharing your story about that makes other people feel connected and involved and a part of the part of your community right because you you've you've curated a community just with your work that people are obviously connected to you so there's like um i feel like you're really really uh just like you're you're really dismantling that 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 feeling by doing what you're doing i think that's very profound and beautiful um and in a segue to show you that you are definitely <laughs> um, not alone. We're going to invite up our special guest. Ooh. Yes. And I'm not going to tell you who it is until okay. they, they pop up on camera. Okay. I don't know if they're in the chat, but we're going to see if it goes through. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good, and you? It's been a while. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks so much, uh, Stefan, for, for, for inviting me. You're so welcome. I just thought this might be a great opportunity for you to finally apologize for being such a bully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, it's, it, listen, it's been, it's been heavy on my shoulders. It's like oh. I haven't been feeling good ever since. It's been five years now. Um, ugh, I don't know. I, I, I've been expecting this apology. It's been coming. <laughs> It's been, yeah, <laughs> I'm listening. Uh, well, I'm... well. <laughs> I'm Diana. Uh, as, um, yes, Jerry, I am terribly, terribly sorry for all the harm that I've caused you. I never intended. <laughs> Diana, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here to come make back. You. <laughs> I'll make you some bread. I promise. I'll make you some bread. Please, please. <laughs> I promise you, my family's gonna be nice. <laughs> so good, so good. Okay, I mean, in, in the hilarity of this spirit, we are gonna play the newlywed game, which is what we played on here before. But in order to explain it, what we're gonna do is I'm going to um, ask you a question and you have to think about an answer for yourself and then an answer for the other person. And we're gonna see how similar they are or okay. how different they are. Oh, God. But don't say yeah. your answers right away and I'll tell you, Who's going first? But wait, so right? I, I don't. I don't say it out loud. No, right? not yet. Okay. Yeah, not yet. So just keep, to, just think about it. And I have to think um, of an answer for 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 Dalila and for me. Yes. And for exactly. you too. No, no, no. Okay. Just you two. I'm okay. just the moderator. I'm just okay. here to watch. <laughs> um, I'm just here to watch. Don't, don't, don't mind me. Um, but to warm up, this question uh, is just a normal question. What is your favorite thing about each other? Okay, I have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have it. Whoever I can say it. First. Okay. Your laugh. Your laugh. Oh. oh. <laughs> your laugh. <laughs> no, it's it's hilarious. Honestly, I love your laugh. Well, on, honestly, on set, I just remember we were we were laughing about so many things. But one other thing that I like is how many different things that you do. Uh, I I don't remember this word properly, but I think were you doing sorting? This is not the right word for it. I don't think so. Is it? No, it's not. Eh? But you know oh. what I'm talking about. Sorry, say it again. Cut off. Swords. You like play with swords. What is the word? Fencing. 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 Yes, you do yeah. fencing. Like that's, to me, that's, I would say, I would consider that not, not like an exotic sport, but it's like, it's not like basic, like, uh, sounds good job. It's not like a basic sport like basketball or anything. Like it's so cool that you're doing something so different. You know what I mean? And when I was, when you were talking to me about it, I was like, well, that's so, I would have never imagined you, you know, doing fencing, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Uh, for you, uh, I remember being on set and always feeling very comfortable um, and very, uh, like, safe. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, you as a person always made me feel very comfortable of just being myself and, and not feeling like I have to mince my words uh, or, or act differently. You always made me feel very... Uh, comfortable 
and and happy. So. Oh, I love you. Oh my God, you made my answer look like shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is this is the like exact crap. like monster <laughs> moment, and then like the the weather reflecting the inner worlds of the characters. <laughs> Your answer. God damn. <laughs> oh, it's so sweet. No, but it's so true. I mean, I remember. It's it's crazy because it, you know, and with you still plays such a big part of our lives, uh, and even today, just because you know, it, it was, it was for you know many years, and we were younger, and there were so many things happening in our lives at once that uh, so many changes also that, yeah, I, uh, it was it was an experience, and it was uh, it, it was crazy, and I'm very very glad to have experienced it with you, uh, Julia. Very very happy. Um, and I wish to have more scenes with you, Stefan, but we, we didn't have many scenes. Your we parents were, so. couldn't afford to go to school. <laughs> also, exactly. you're you probably better off for it. <laughs> like, uh, just a, you would have been bombarded. Yeah, I think, bombarded I think, if, if we would have ever, ever met in the show, you would have probably, probably like, I don't know, beat me up or something. I don't know. I don't know, like, you, you get out of here, you rat, like, uneducated. I would have called you know? your name. I for sure, like, probably would have beat you up. I don't think Mr. Phillips had the, the physical prowess. But for sure would have called you names. Like, yeah, you would have sure. like, hey, baguette. <laughs> <laughs> something, something, <laughs> something like that. Very, very, very on brand. Oh, um, and it, yeah, like, I'm like, you were before, you're like, it's so hard for me to play the, the bully. And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> me too. It was so hard. Um, it was actually an absolute riot. It was so fun. <laughs> you it enjoyed was, it. Spot. <laughs> it was so fun. I'm not going to lie. Um, oh, okay, next question. Describe yourself and each other in one word. So give it, give yourself a minute to think about it. And we will start with, um, uh, we'll start with Delilah and um, AJ, you will give your answer first. Okay. And then, uh, and then Delilah, you tell us what you were thinking for yourself. And then you will afterwards say what you think of AJ and then AJ, you will say yours for yourself. Okay. Does that make sense? I have one, I have one, I have one, but I need to feel like, I don't know the word for this, so let me just Google it real quick. Okay. <laughs> uh, one word. Mm. Quick little translate. Okay. <laughs> wait. <laughs> that, 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 okay, wait. I don't think this is the right word, though. We'll see. Okay. I would say in many ways, opposite. Opposite. And, and this is why I'm saying this, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. You love reading. And I'm not the biggest reader. You, I, I'm pretty sure you're very, very. You love, you loved school. When I, I remember when you, I think I'm pretty sure you loved school. I, I'm not a school person. Uh, I'm really not a school person. Um, e, uh, <laughs> I'm tall. <laughs> you're pretty short. <laughs> uh, so that's why I'm saying opposite. But maybe you, you. I'm waiting for your words because I think you'll have a much better, much better answer. <laughs> Okay, Julia, what word what word came to you? Was it oh, the same word? Uh as like uh yeah, I guess I was gonna say different. Like something different. along the along those lines. So opposite and different are pretty similar, which is okay. Um Yeah. Uh for you, hmm, I would say passionate. Um in in pretty much everything you, you do you always bring such passion, such energy into it uh, that, yeah, if I could describe you in one word, it would be that. Mm. I didn't think of a word to describe you. Wait, wait. No, describe you. I, 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 oh, describe. Oh, wait, what? Describe yourself. Myself. One word. Yeah, you have to think of yourself as well. Um, I would say, yeah, I, I would say, I would say, hardworking uh, or workaholic but for you i would say educated or uh very very um uh oh, what's the word wait one second guys one second one second i'm going on google one second <laughs> one second one second what is this other <laughs> words for <laughs> one second guys <laughs> see this is this is what happens when jerry is a bit it's still like a bit in the character is like these words uh, don't really. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say gentle, while, gentle, while you're gentle looking, woman. Why don't... Gentle woman. A what? Say again. Gentle woman. I would say it that Delila, oh. you so you're you're so elegant. Like you speak so eloquently. Um, mm. you yeah, like everywhere that you go, you always have like a a a, 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 a straight back, and you you're, you're very 
uh, uh, postured and uh, yeah, you speak very well. I think that's uh, that's words that describe you. Mm, love that. These are all great answers. Um, the second question is, if they were an animal, I mean, the third question, if they were an animal, what animal a rat, would they kidding. be and who would you be? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, what? Repeat. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I interrupt. Yeah, uh, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? And okay. what would animal would they be? And okay. this time, Julia, you will say your answer for AJ first. And then AJ, you say what you think you are. Okay. And then afterwards, we'll switch it to Delia. Oh, crap. Okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> wait, so who goes first? <laughs> uh, Delia, I'm so bad. Delia was going to go first. Okay. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. Mm, animal. Like a husky? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> for you, for me. For you, for you. For me. <laughs> okay, so now I gotta name you. Yeah. Uh, what do you? No, no, you name yourself. Name yeah. What myself i think a tiger a tiger because i Ooh. i have a vision mm -hmm. and i don't let go of my eyes they just it goes until i i, I kill the prey um mm -hmm. um i would say for you though mm -hmm. i would think just a happy panda <laughs> honestly just like a happy panda like you know the pandas are like are on their backs and like ah! yeah. <laughs> like I see, <laughs> that's what i that's what i see you as like a happy panda just like all fluffy <laughs> I really hope some fan draws Diana as a panda right, as a in the panda. Diana dress, like the puff sleeves. That, that would be some somebody that will. Fan artist. To say that. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, I've always kind of seen myself as like cat. Um, uh, a cat? Yeah. You also like, have, you have my those like eyes. cat eyes too. Those like almond eyes. Yeah, very uh, much. How many lives yeah. do you have left if you're a cat? Uh, one. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> one left. Uh, no, yeah, I, I have no idea. <laughs> um, uh, that's, I love that. Okay, and then if they were a character on a different TV show, what character would they be? Uh, something that, that has to do with like a librarian. <laughs> Bell? <laughs> like you're you're some kind of librarian, Bell. You're like, come on. Some kind I don't know from which show, I don't know from which movie, but <laughs> I, I see wait, no, wait, let's wait, let me see, let me see. Which Google. I uh, mm, this is tough. Wait. I suddenly don't remember any movies or any shows. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, hey, you're, on spot, you're on the spot, you're on the spot. Show, show, what, which shows are there? Um, wait, wait. Um, I think Millie, I'm not I'm gonna honest. lie, you guys are giving me Hermione and Ron vibes. Like, so oh, yeah, hard. so hard. Oh, oh my god, like that's so true. Like, you'd be like, yeah, you'd be like, great one for you, AJ, is Ron, Ron Weasley because he's, oh, yeah, yeah, he's very much, um, immature. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, not what I was gonna say, but. Uh, I was gonna say very, very goal oriented, um, uh, fights for what he believes in, um, mm -hmm. strong willed, very passionate. Um, yeah, so I would I would say eleven from Stranger Things for you, honestly, because you're kind of you have that savior mm -hmm. kind of help everyone kind of aspect of you that like you put yourself in front of a bullet for somebody kind of kind of thing, and you yeah you just have that in you. So I think that's something that, like that's a gift and i think that that's a character that you probably resonate with in my in my eyes in my eyes yeah okay and then finally <laughs> if they were not allowed to play their character on and within me what other character would you have given them even hello i'm, Gil be I'm, 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 I'm gilbert well. blythe i'm gilbert blythe <laughs> hello Hello, Anne. I'm a bottom tree. Did 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 he ever did he ever wear a cowboy hat? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Wrong show. <laughs> what? A little too much yellow stuff. <laughs> Wrong show. 
<laughs> no, I, I don't know. There's not a million characters in Anthony either. Pro honestly, it, it, it would be Gilbert. Which show? I think you would be Anne. It would be Anne. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, playing, playing Anne would be, would be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I guess for you, I was going to say uh, either Gilbert um, or the, the, this is a very out there one, mainly because you're the wrong age, but you're Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Matthew. Yeah. Okay. I, Matthew, I resonated a lot with. It's funny. He was so, R. H. Thompson was such a nice guy on set. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I miss him so much. Um, I'm gonna speak speak with him too soon. It's it's crazy. It's, I've been so busy working that I haven't had time kind of to reconnect with a lot of the of the Ann uh, the Ann cast. Have you guys been in contact with with many people? Uh, y you, Stephen. Uh, uh, yeah. I kind of fell out of touch with everyone else. Yeah. Uh, so sad. We need to, we need we need to do something soon. We need to all do something soon. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, we should get everybody together and like play a live game like Oh this, my god. Where we do like and trivia just to see how well we actually knew the show or like how well oh, we I knew what was going lose. on. <laughs> or if we can even remember it. I think that would be really fun. Guys, well maybe we'll cure that. I know I'd lose. Okay. I'm just like I'm just putting it out there. I will lose. And I'm so blatantly honest with it. And it's okay, really I'm accepting it already. <laughs> like, it's fun to be bad at something because then there's yeah. no pressure. <laughs> Gotta be bad at something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this has been a great moment for all of us to connect again. And it's been really, really lovely getting to, like, see both of your smiles and hear both of your laughs. And also um, to have gone a little deeper into your heart Dalila that was you shared so many wonderful things and thank you so much for being who you are and um for helping others be themselves as well uh we'll just do like one quick thank you to Kino and uh, a shout out to Near Protocol for championing this industry conversation and allowing us to reconnect because who knows when it would have been but now that we've been thank you Kino yes exactly <laughs> Um, so uh, go out, find some scope for the imagination. Um, and then also the, what we like to do here at Kino for our ending moment is what we call the ask. So we've, we're constantly, um, I think a lot of people are afraid to ask for help. And we've just gathered this beautiful community together of people who both like love both of your work. What would be the best way for this group of people to uplift and champion you? Is it following on social media, checking out a new project? Um, do you have anything else that you want to release, like poetry or art or a different um, um, page or direction that these people can come and support you? Mm -hmm. AJ, you, no, go, you first. Go, go first. No, I gotta think. No, you go first. I gotta <laughs> think too. <laughs> oh. Steven, you go. <laughs> you guys are uh, doing it. You're here. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'd say I'd say maybe honestly send me an email. Send me an email. Just honestly send me an email or message me because I'd love talking to you guys. Um, I honestly love speaking to the fan uh, to, to the fan base whenever I can. Staying in touch with everybody, seeing how they're doing over the years. Especially what I love is especially seeing um, you know messages all the way. Like when I scroll up a conversation, it goes all the way up to 2017, and I see how long it's been that you've been a fan of the show. Mm. I love that, and I love hearing how you you know you you've seen the show and and who you've met over the years because we have done many campaigns on and you know for season one the premiere the pilot there's been so many things that have happened uh, and sometimes somebody will message me and be like hey i don't know if you remember me you met i met you you know i'm you met me in in 2018 and i'm like I, you know and they send me a picture and we have a picture together i'm like oh my god yes i remember you and that's an amazing feeling so that honestly is the best support you could do just message me or yeah that's it great Billy you uh, yeah, I I need to get better at being more active on my social media. You, uh, do. you do. I know I'm not, <laughs> but um, last, last, last pictures like in 2019. <laughs> I uploaded stuff recently. Yeah, you got those good headshots on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, I need to be I need to be a lot more active uh, on my social media because I, I greatly appreciate all the fans that, uh, we amassed from Anne and just as, as individuals as well. Um, and thank you so much, all of you guys for, for your support. Uh, I also wanted to like, um, muito obrigada a todo mundo. Um, muito obrigada, te amo tanto. Uh, merci beaucoup tout le monde. J'aime beaucoup. Uh, gracias todo el mundo. Uh, te amo mucho. Um, 
just thank you guys so much for all your support. Uh, yeah, I guess here on my, my social media, uh, Delila Bella zero one, um, where if I have anything new, I will update my, my social media, uh, to bring like attention to it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be a lot better at like interacting a lot more with, with my fans, uh, on my, on my posts. Um, because I'm just, I'm very, very grateful for all, all your support. Uh, so yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh -huh. Sweet. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. Well, guys, I look forward to reconnecting with you guys. I'm actually coming to LA soon, so I don't know where you guys are at, but I'm going in like the next two weeks. So, uh, yeah, you know, in person reunion. In the person. Next will be the three of us in person. Let's do it. I'm down. Beautiful. We're, we're, we're calling it right now. I we're booking it. it. Like, and you know what? We're reconnecting and it's beautiful. Uh, well, thank you again, both of you, for joining. And I hope everyone here has a beautiful day. And thank you again for coming. Ciao, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. 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 B